I mean, what do you think about it? Oh, I, I, the law should always take into account someone's popularity. I think that's, <laughs> that's oh, I mean, what, what's happened to our country? For, it's as though you can't even commit financial fraud anymore. You can't, you can't inflate the value of your properties uh, when you need a loan and then deflate it uh, with taxes. I mean, uh, the next thing you know, they're gonna send you to jail instead of your lawyer and your accountant and your campaign manager and everyone else uh, ar around you. It's, no, to, the idea that someone may face accountability uh, who's that rich and powerful is outrageous and this country shouldn't stand for it. <laughs> but, uh, but, but what if it, what if it turns out to be his, his get out of jail free pass? It's his path to people will see him as a martyr, he gets he. Okay. You're okay I with that. He, is that, I, he could I become president again. He could become president anyway. Fareed, you, it's, we either have the rule of law or we have no rule of law. The rule of law does not take into account if that might make you a martyr to somebody. I'd much rather have the conversation be, what is the law? What exactly are we saying that, that he did? His lawyer went to jail for this same situation for a couple of years. So what is the crime? Is it a crime? The there reason, are people who say it's selective prosecution, that this would not... Everything is get. selective prosecution. The reason why Donald Trump became popular in the first place and the reason why these populist movements is that the citizenry have become fed up with the lack of accountability for those in power. We have no accountability in our financial systems. We have no accountability for the bankers. I mean, our uh, Congress trade stocks with information they get making laws and they do it to great success and they won't stop it because they're the ones in charge of making the law about it and instead of bringing accountability to the rampant corruption that is uh, uh, surrounds our our government and our financial systems the supreme court just changed the definition of corruption Rather than prosecuting it, rather than holding people accountable, they just went, how about this? How about, okay, why don't we just say this? It was even better than that, was that they said, you politicians, you think that's corruption because you're engaging it, but we actually don't think it's corruption. And, and we're we're going to tell you, don't worry about it. You can influence, yeah, Petal, yeah. as long as you don't explicitly say, this by the way, this money is so that I may influence this law yeah. specifically and you have to lay out. Like, that is what has, the, the lack of confidence that people have in the system is, and you even see it throughout the media, even that conversation, should we, should we not? It's a, oh, but he's popular, and then it might make him more popular, but not less popular. D did he do something wrong? What was it? Explain that to us. What is the law that he supposedly violated? What are the ramifications of it? Uh, I, I don't see him ever actually going to jail. I personally don't even care. I just want a system that somehow finds a consistent accountability. So in many ways, you, at least for me, you created or defined American political satire. How has that changed? I mean, it feels to me like the, the, the stuff you did, mm -hmm. you know, the the showing the video and then commenting. It's become, it's everybody does it. And it's, sure. not, even, it's not even comics. I yes. mean, that's what Tucker Carlson does when he wants to make his points. Sure. He's, he's borrowing from your yes. playbook. Yes, no, it's, it's a real delight knowing. <laughs> <laughs> it's always good to arm the most cynical and worst people in media. But do you look at it and say, now this whole thing is commoditized? You, you, or, well, it was, listen, I, it was commoditized. You know, I wasn't doing it uh, out of gracious altruism. I mean, we were selling Budweiser. Uh, <laughs> it's always been commoditized. It was, I think it's, you know, there's a lot of talk of, so exposing absurdity or exposing hypocrisy, what's the point? Well, the point is, is that this is a relentless fight. They always talk about, you know, the, uh, the arc of the, moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. But it doesn't bend towards justice by gravity. Like, you have to bend it. And there's a bunch of people trying to bend it back. And you use every tool in your arsenal, and none of them will be uh, 
you know, the one thing. There is no panacea. It takes, you know, all those different things doing in Washington over these past few years gave me a great understanding of how things actually get done incrementally and, and sometimes in one fell swoop. But our country is held together by hundreds of really talented legislative aides. Their bosses, many times, are wind-up dolls who really don't know. I mean, half of it, if you go down there, especially the Senate is like an assisted living facility. <laughs> like, the intramural sports at the Senate. <laughs> so, I, you know, it's held together by these legislative aides that are relentlessly trying uh, uh, to do the right thing and by the thousands of grassroots activists that are trying to get access. And they're blocked by a moat of lobbyists and moneyed interest that prevent the people in that building from doing the work that best benefits all the people outside of that. In order to make America great and glorious again, I am tonight announcing my candidacy for President of the United States. Let's not forget how we all felt about this dude prior to his reign. And then, of course, there's Donald Trump. Donald Trump has been saying that he will run for president as a Republican, which is surprising since I just assumed he was running as a joke. And in doing so, let's revisit Seth Meyers ripping him to shreds. According to Gawker, Trump's legendary hairdo is actually a wee. Remember the media's obsession with his hair? Donald Trump often appears on Fox, which is ironic because a fox often appears on Donald Trump's head. <laughs> Washington Post table with Trump and you can't finish your entree, don't worry, the fox will eat it. Myers didn't let it slide. A talk radio station out of Albany, quote, I have a great relationship with the blacks. I've always had a great relationship with the blacks. The man who follows a white supremacist playbook really said this. Donald Trump said recently he has a great relationship with the blacks, though unless the blacks are a family of white people, I bet he's mistaken. <laughs> which Myers rightfully called out. It was him going down and one by one looking us over like we were pieces of meat and he was trying to decide which you know piece of meat he wanted. And I was hoping you know that would be the end, that I wouldn't have to deal with him anymore. And so then on finals night, when I'm sitting in hair and makeup, getting ready in just my robe, and he comes walking backstage, and I'm so startled, like what? What are you doing back here? We're a bunch of women getting ready for a beauty pageant that we've been working towards. You know, Miss right, USA. You a with yeah, under it. exactly. Like, why are you back here? And then I saw him walk into the dressing room, just like he has bragged about on Howard Stern, and the audio is out there. Horrendous stuff that we learned. Also, a recruiting visit per Myers. Donald Trump owns the Miss USA pageant, which is great for Republicans because it will streamline their search for a vice president. <laughs> Macy said it's dropping Trump's menswear collection following derogatory comments he made about Mexican immigrants. The retailer released a statement saying, quote, Macy's is a company that stands for diversity and inclusion. We have no tolerance for discrimination in any form. In light of statements made by Donald Trump, which are inconsistent with Macy's values, we've decided to discontinue our business relationship with Mr. Trump. On this topic. I like that Trump is filthy rich, but nobody told his accent. His whole life is models and gold leaf and marble columns, but he still sounds like a know-it-all down at the OTB. <laughs> Mr. Trump may not be a good choice for president, but he would definitely make a great press secretary. How much fun would that be? Kim Jong-il is a loser. His latest rally was a flop. I feel bad for Ahmadinejad. He, he never man wears a windbreaker. He has no class. I, on the other hand, sell my own line of ties. You can find them at Macy's in the flammable section. Myers pokes fun as well. I was at really? Lurie last night and some guy came up to me and said, I saw you on Fox and Friends this morning. Is Gretchen as cute in person as she is on TV? And what did you oh, answer, America? Uh, gorgeous. Gorgeous. You gorgeous. Look at her today. Beautiful dress. You look wonderful. Gretchen, How are you? you look wonderful. Gretchen, very, very beautiful dress. That a great color. Right. In summary, Gretchen's beautiful. Oh, beautiful. You look beautiful. Well, you Thank look you. fabulous too. Thank Brian, can you tell Gretchen she is definitely winning 
today. <laughs> she looks amazing. <laughs> Who could forget the toxic culture at Fox News? There are actually some unscheduled parties happening tonight, and I've been asked to give everyone a rundown. Fox News is having a party. Security is tough, so make sure you bring your driver's license and your long-form driver's license. But if you're blonde, don't worry about it. Just bring that dynamite smile. I don't have too much more to add, but there's two things we need to say. One, we need to continue to mock Trump because he deserves mockery. That doesn't mean he's not dangerous, but it means he deserves mockery. And we also have to acknowledge the elephant in the room because with these sorts of things, and we've seen it for the last few years with, with the current President Biden, we saw it with Obama, we even saw it with other Republicans to some degree, that they're okay being mocked. They may, you know, have their feelings hurt sometimes. I don't know what they say behind the scenes. But the mark of an authoritarian, there's so many, but one of the earliest signs Trump was going to be an authoritarian was how he did not like being mocked. He did not like when Barack Obama and comedians like Stewart and, and, and so many others mocked him recently and in the recent past. If you want to see a fascist, Look at a powerful man who gets mocked by people that are below him. If he doesn't take it well, that's a monster in waiting.